obviously you've got such an interesting vantage point having worked in the tech industry and run a, a presidential campaign. What did you make of uh, the lawmakers' lines of questioning here? They certainly were much more prepared than I believe some folks expected them to be. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Certainly some of the lines of questioning uh, did indicate that they had very specific topics they wanted to dig into. You just showed a clip of Amazon's treatment of its third-party sellers, and that has been a persistent complaint. There, there are many companies that have sold through Amazon and then felt like as soon as Amazon figured out that something was selling well, then they would uh, find a way to privilege a house brand. Uh, so, th so that came up. Uh, I, I wish that we talked a little bit more, a lot more, about the treatment of data by Facebook and Google in particular, but they were focused on antitrust issues and anti-competitive behavior on the part of these companies, which to me is a very large signal as to what may be coming down the pike where some of these tech companies are concerned in terms of antitrust actions. On the subject of Bezos for a moment, this is the richest man in the world, his first time testifying before Congress, and also the owner of the Washington Post. Does that create an at all awkward dynamic between these lawmakers and Bezos, given perhaps a desire for coverage or positive coverage in the future? Well, I think it's something we should look at very seriously, where if you are a tech company that dominates in a particular area, let's call it online retail, then it could be that you and your owners or principals should not necessarily be expanding into uh, national media companies as one possibility. And, and right now we're in a media landscape where many of these media companies are struggling to retain profitability. So you're seeing any number of tech leaders buy flagship publications like the Washington Post or others. Uh, and so it's something that we should take a long look at because you should not have media organs uh, that you're questioning their editorial independence in this way. So let's talk about the issues that you have raised with the data and the data collection. What are your biggest concerns about how these companies operate? Well, right now, Facebook and Google in particular are generating tens of billions of dollars a year uh, from our data, and we are not seeing a dime. And you think to yourself, well, how could this be? Because Facebook is free, Google is somewhat free, uh, but they're monetizing our data, selling and reselling it. And Google recently announced that they're going to try and do away with third-party cookies uh, throughout their sites, which would be an enormous change, and it would end up consolidating control of user data in Google's hands uh, and make it very, very difficult for many third-party publishers uh, to compete. And so we have to face facts that at this point, Facebook and Google have these data empires on the backs of our data. And unfortunately, our legislators are way, way behind the curve on this set of issues. It's negative, not just on the economics, but also potentially on our autonomy and our democratic processes. Do you think that Apple is in a different league here? When it comes to data, Apple has certainly positioned itself as a company that is very focused on privacy, the privacy and security of its users first and foremost. Yeah, Apple has a different relationship with its customers and users where you elect to join the Apple walled garden. You generally have a paying subscriber type relationship. <laughs> and, and so to the extent that they have our data, um, it, it's within an ecosystem that we actually uh, opted into. Uh, and that's a different situation than is happening with Facebook and Google, in part because Facebook and Google monetize our data not just on their own sites, but through other partner sites as well. It's much more pervasive. Um, so I do think Apple has a different relationship there uh, and it should be looked at with a different set of principles and concerns in mind. Meantime, the biggest contentions about Apple today have been the App Store and the 30% cut that Apple takes from the vast majority of apps that make revenue in the App Store. You know, over the past couple of months, we've been speaking to folks, um, the CEO of Spotify, the CEO of Epic Games, which owns Fortnite, about their concerns here, as well as Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, who took Apple's side on this one. Let's take a listen uh, to some of what they had to say. Well, it's a duopoly. There are two companies uh, together. They control 100% of uh, the smartphone market, or something like 99.9%. .9%. Um, 
And if you look in a lot of territories, Apple has the majority of revenue um, in you know, many of these countries. Other countries, uh, Google has majority of revenue, but it's impossible to look at a territory and say that in this place, Apple or Google uh, is not a monopoly. Uh, they have monopoly and they have business practices that only a monopoly could get away with. Sometimes I have negative opinions about Apple being a little too much control over you, but I thought about this one, you know, this one that's going on right now with uh, antitrust, and I actually take Apple's side on this one. 30% and giving you, you guarantees and protection and security in, in the apps that you could possibly download when you look at what happened in the Android world. Oh my gosh, yeah, I don't object to the 30% at all. It's moving in the right direction, but we still have many, many steps to go before we would consider this a, uh, an open and fair platform. Daniel Ek, the CEO of Spotify, at the end there. Andrew, what do you make of, of that particular issue, given you know Apple's brand, given that there are 1.7 million apps uh, in the App Store that, that maybe wouldn't have a, a place if Apple didn't run the gates and, and hold the keys the ways it does? You know, it's a, it's a tough one. It's a line drawing question because clearly there's some toll that's appropriate. And you could look at 30% and say it's too high. Um, no one would argue it's too low. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think. Uh, but, there's a, but, but there is something of a duopoly. It's true where, you know, if, if you want to have access to this vast marketplace, you kind of have to play by Apple's rules. And Apple has set a 30% threshold. Um, to, to, to me, um, the issue almost isn't even the toll they're taking, it is the control. Um, there's a certain toll that would be appropriate. You could certainly argue for a lower than 30%. Um, but regardless of the toll they're taking, the, the other issue really is their ability to determine exposure in the App Store and, and who gets to participate in really what is one of the only ways to reach consumers. Meantime, the president made his voice heard on this today, tweeting earlier, if Congress doesn't bring fairness to big tech, which they should have done years ago, I will do it myself with executive orders. You know, this is an interesting issue because all of these companies have been feeling it from both sides of the aisle. Obviously, Republicans have their concerns about anti-conservative bias that these platforms, Facebook and Google, are taking down too much content. Liberals have the opposite concern that these platforms are, are, are leaving too much up. How do you think the politics will impact what these companies are going to face over the next several years? Because obviously the House investigation is one thing, but they're facing investigations in several states from several uh, different agencies across the country. On this one, I kind of feel for the tech companies because they're being put in a position where they have to sort of be the arbiters of what is uh, proper types of content and communication. I was actually very amused by the Republican Congress person who asked, like, why are my emails going to spam? Is it anti-conservative bias? And then a Democratic congressperson was like, no, it happens to all of our emails <laughs> because campaign emails are generally regarded as uh, um, as kind of spammy. Um, so so to, to me, the politicization of this issue to me is unfortunate. I feel like, uh, like conservatives who are crying um, bias, uh, you know, like a, a lot of these sites actually, in some ways, you could argue, are... Um, are are actually very friendly to different types of content, including conservative content. The, the problem really is when some of this content skews into something that you could regard as hate speech or uh, incitement to violence, um, and that's a real problem. And these tech companies have been put in position where they have to draw these lines, um, and folks are then going to be angry at whatever line they draw. Um, so on this one, I, I think the tech companies uh, best approach would be to say, look, like you're asking us to make these very, very difficult decisions. Um, maybe we should have some kind of other way to make these decisions beyond us, because whatever decision they make, someone's going to politicize it and attack it. So it might be in their interest to actually put their heads together with, for example, uh, media companies, government, nonprofits, and come up with a, a more uh, objective set of criteria that they could not be attacked on. Meantime, you have both the president and vice president Biden full speed ahead with their campaigns, with advertising on Facebook, advertising on YouTube. At the same time, just yesterday, this video about hydroxychloroquine being touted as a cure going viral, but then all of the platforms pulling it. How concerned are you about these platforms being undermined, being weaponized and compromising yet another presidential election? 
Uh, well, I'm very concerned about election security, and it may not even be in the hands of the tech companies. I mean, you can see New York's having trouble counting mail-in ballots uh, days and weeks after the fact. And this goes back to the issue about um, moderating content, where if you are promoting something that is not beneficial to public health or even harmful to, to public health, again, you're putting these platforms in a, a spot where you say, wait a minute, like we, we can't allow uh, misinformation that's going to hurt the public health out there, and then someone will politicize that decision. So election security is one issue, disinformation is another issue, uh, and these issues are unfortunately going to be with us for this, this election in November. Uh, I think we all want to have an outcome that actually just gets declared the night of, uh, and that to me is going to be a big test for our democracy. Certainly, I, I hope that we have an election that everyone agrees on the result relatively quickly. So as we look forward, do you think that these companies can do a better job managing their relationship with Washington? You know, so here's, I mean, you, you know that Emily know this just about better than anyone. I mean, there's been a long period of time where technology just uh, tried to just keep government at bay and say like, look, like you don't understand us, just leave us alone. <laughs> and then they, wrote, they came a little bit later to say, well, I guess we should like invest in lobbyists. That seems like a good idea. Um, but they, they've regarded government really is a source of friction to be circumvented. Um, and that actually has to be the progression among tech companies where they regard government as like a real, uh, a real, let's say, peer that needs to be engaged with, uh, as opposed to someone you can just try and um, run circles around. Uh, because the issues are growing in prominence. And unfortunately, for these technology companies, they've gone from being able to do no wrong uh, to uh, having fewer and fewer political allies and friends because it's becoming increasingly clear to many Americans that there have been excesses that could be very destructive to not just competitive landscapes, but also our democracy and our kids' mental health.